Hi, I'm Richie Constant, and you're watching Sofa King Cool. Something cool here with Richie Cotson. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Second leg of the tour. How's it going so far? Uh, it's going really well. Yeah, we're um, we've got seven shows in, so it's kind of early on, but uh, yeah, it's good. Now, this day and age, you basically have to continuously tour on an album to go ahead and, and make a profit, just because of the downloads and people not paying for records anymore. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I, I personally have to continuously tour, but the truth is is that um, there's much more uh, income. The income stream is really touring more than records. And, you know, in, in the old days, you know, you can make money, you know, good money selling records. And, you know, uh, and now obviously, you know, people don't really buy records. <laughs> so yeah, so I, you know, I guess there's truth to that. So you know, you have to, you know, getting on the road. You know, that's the main income uh, is touring. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Now, for someone like you who has written songs for Poison, you've written songs for Gene Simmons. You're a songwriter. Does that? Well, I never wrote anything for Gene. Well, you were listed as two tracks on the album that he did in your I, studio. I played on the record. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He recorded that record at my studio when I had it. And uh, I don't remember what I did. I, I did play something, yeah, whatever I'm credited for. But I don't think I wrote. Maybe I did. I don't. I don't remember writing anything though. Well, it's going maybe on. Maybe he gave me credit. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that being said, yeah. what we were talking about having the tour and people not buying albums. Mm -hmm. Somebody who writes songs. Yeah. That kind of had to affect you more than anybody. I mean, you obviously are able to tour and you still be able to perform. But when you're doing songs for other people. And people aren't buying those. I, I've never done that, though. I mean, I don't. Um, I've never been a guy that that writes songs for people. I I, I really just kind of my whole purpose for playing the guitar is to create music. So it's just my nature, you know. It's what I do. We call it a hobby, or that, that turned into a a source of a, of a living. Uh, but I write songs because I love to, and it just happens. I, I don't. Um, uh, I don't force myself to do it. it. It's something that I have an idea. Oh, I'm gonna try and write that. You know, it's a cool. You know, and I document it on my phone. A lot of times, uh, I'll be sleeping and I'll hear something, and you know, I've learned to wake myself up because oftentimes uh, I'll forget the idea. You know, so um, I. Uh, wow, that's distracting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I'll. Um, have ideas and act on them. I have a, like 200 ideas in my phone right now, you know, sitting in here waiting, you know, to develop. But one thing, usually what happens is the ones that, that stay in my mind right. are the ones I write. And the ones that stay on the phone usually get forgotten. And then occasionally I'll go back and listen and I'll say, oh, that's cool. And then I'll have the idea and write it. But I just write because it's kind of what I've always done, you know. I, I've always been putting out my own records since 1989 so yeah it's kind of what I do and I've been lucky in the sense that I've been uh, consistent and so I've never really had what you would call a hit record but um, I've been able to cultivate an audience that is interested in my music which allows me to be able to go and tour and have uh, you know a life in music. I've never done anything else. You know, I've never uh, was never a bricklayer or a, never worked at the post office. I've only done music. Were you you started what when you were you were seven? You first picked up a guitar, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I was seven when I started taking guitar lessons, and then I started uh, playing live in a, in, a, in a band when I was twelve or thirteen. Me and another kid from school put something together and played it like high school dances and local fairs and stuff like that and uh, that evolved into a more full-time like a, a, a bar band you know I got involved with some older guys that were over 21 and they thought me and my friend were were good 
right. they wanted to work with us, so we formed this band. And, and back in the day, um, I used to have to have a parent in the venue, you know, because I was a minor. And so, uh, you know, that's that was my beginning. You know, I spent years in the cover band circuit in Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey, and then I got I got signed when uh, last year, right out of high school, I got got a record deal, and I started going to San Francisco, going back and forth, back and forth, until finally, about a year in to the deal, I moved to L.A. Awesome. Yeah. Now, that's got to be cool growing up in the lifestyle. So, I mean, you've watched it evolve from the time you were a kid to what it is now from... I've been up and down, man. I, I, my career has been a roller coaster, man. I've been on the indie label, uh, putting records out with no budget. Then I was on the major label signed to Interscope, hanging out at Jimmy Iovine's house, playing football with Bruce Springsteen in the front yard in Malibu, and then suddenly uh, losing my record deal, and then getting another record deal, and then joining a famous rock band, and then not being in a famous band. So it's been a roller coaster. But one of the things that's happened that's been kind of interesting is the minute I got myself in a position where I didn't have to depend on a record company to put my music out, my career really started to open up and I was able to make the records I wanted to make, get them right out to the people that wanted to hear them and by doing that I started getting offers to go tour and it kind of really started in Europe in, uh, in the early 2000s. Um, I was getting offers to go, started in Italy, and I was going over there, I'd spend a month or two at a time and going over there and, and building it up, building it up, started in a van, so it was really a roller coaster. The first tour I ever did, I had my own bus. It was me and the bass player shared one bus. <laughs> and then suddenly, 10 years later, I'm touring in Italy in a van, you know, eight hour drives. And then now I'm back to being in a bus again. So, I mean, it's just been this complete roller coaster um, but one thing I, I will say that the minute I was able to get control of uh, my presentation and not having to be beholden to a record company is when I started to really have a what I consider a, more of a career. Right. You know, made more money. You know, I have owned the masters now to about 15 of my titles. Um, you know, none of them are hit records, but the but they're out there and and. Uh, it's certainly uh, more than enough to live off of, so it's been it's been good. Now, do you find it easier now with social media and the easy access to putting stuff out? Yeah, you know, uh, you can put stuff right up to Spotify or iTunes, and uh, if people want to buy the physical copy, you know, it's on Amazon. You can get it. You know, stores, some stores, the stores will stock it if there's a demand. That's the thing about stores; there, are, there really aren't any, but the ones that exist, if there's a demand it can be stocked. But you're in, in that world you're competing, you know, with artists that are selling, you know, five hundred thousand records or whatever, which back in the old day that would have been, you know, three million. You yeah, know? for sure. But uh um but it's you know it's all there, you know, and um the social media thing is really good to uh, let people know when you're playing. That's really what I use it for. I you know, I pretty much use Instagram mm -hmm. and that's really it. I, everything I do goes to Instagram and then it feeds my Twitter and my Facebook, so I never really look at the other stuff. I just say, oh, I'm playing here, I'm playing there, and then occasionally when I'm home, I put pictures of my dog on the internet. Because <laughs> people really are interested in that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's our, that's our big sell on there. For yeah. You. Get some of those kick videos. I got like 10 million views. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now, you just released the uh, single, The Damned. I did. And that was in January. Uh huh. Is there any more plans for any more singles coming out? Yeah, this year? yeah, I've got, I've got a bunch. I'm going to put them out this year. Uh, when I go back home, uh, I have a little break, about a month or so, and uh, we're going to shoot another music video for another song I have, and so hopefully that'll come out maybe early June before I go to Europe. Cool. Very yeah. Cool. Another single. Yeah. Now, when you look through that mm -hmm. phone of yours, you see you got 200 ideas yeah. you have there. How do you determine what goes to where? I mean, I know you do stuff for yourself. I know you do stuff with the winery dog still. I mean, sure. Well, you know what I'll do. Like I have stuff in in the phone, but I also have stuff on my hard drive in my studio too. And I have stuff that I'm working on, and then I have stuff you know that's still in my head. It's my mood, you know, if I feel like working on something that I can do something justice, I'll go do it. Um, on the first Winery Dog record, everything was new. 
and so we went in and jammed and we had a, a, a bunch of ideas that we kind of formulated the, the music. The, it was an instrumental kind of skeleton. And on those, I took those skeletons and wrote to them. So I would write the lyrics and the melodies and basically turn those ideas into songs. But on that record, there were also some songs that I had already written that probably would have either died on my hard drive or ended up on a on one of my records or something. So we, there was a two a duality there, you know, you had the songs that we jammed on, but then songs like I'm No Angel, Damaged, a couple of other ones, Elevate, uh, the chorus and the verse of Elevate were already written. And then uh, I had another song that had a cool riff for the bridge and we pulled that out and put that in the middle. So there was the element of you know doing stuff that already existed and then also creating new stuff. On the second record, after having done that, you know, I kind of thought to myself, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to take songs that I write and then bring them in to a situation and and you know put other people's names on it. You know right, what I mean? Right. If I if I'm if I write the song, I'm going to write the song. So on the second record, in my mind, I said, well, I'm not doing that. I'm not bringing in completed songs that are done. I'll leave those for another home and, and then we'll do everything together. So on the second record, it was more of a, it was more of what I would call a, 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 a more true collaboration in the sense that all the songs on that record, with the exception of the song Fire, which was something I was messing with, um, all the songs on that record really came out of uh, Billy playing a, a bass riff or me strumming a chord progression, or, or Mike playing a beat, and then us kind of jamming on it. And then at that point, you know, going back to the old formula, I'd take those jam sessions and write lyrics and melodies to it and finish it. So that's kind of the, you know, the way the, the band worked. A little bit different on the second record. Now, is it hard to be in a band like the Winery Dogs? I mean, you guys all have different things going on at all times. I mean. Yeah. How do you guys find time to get together? Well, it is, it, yeah, it, it is, uh, you know, uh, it's not a band, like, in the sense, like, you know, you know, it's not like, uh, I don't know, like when Poison formed, like, those guys kind of got in a van and drove out from Pennsylvania and lived in a warehouse together and, and learned everything together and created this thing and, and, you know, so it's not that kind of a band. We're guys that are, you know, I don't want to say older guys, but, you know, I'm 48, and, right. and they're both older than me. We have history, we have lives, you know, families, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's not like we're a bunch of teenagers that just got together and said, you know, hey, let's go rock, you know. It's like we got together with our histories and our uh, experiences, and I think that's what makes it unique, you know. So. Um, as far as uh, if it's hard or not, yeah, you know, it's not hard working with with Billy and Mike. I mean, they're great guys and they're very easy to uh, to work with and hang out with. So we have a great camaraderie. I'm not saying hard in that aspect. I'm saying uh, hard in actually getting the time to be together. I mean, no, uh, no, it's not because when we want to, to do something, we're going to do it. You know, we did we did the first record. It did really, really well, and then um, I mean, it really did well that record considering what was going on or what is going on with record sales um, that record did really well and so uh, because of that we uh, dove right back into another album cycle and um, after that album cycle I thought it was it made sense to kind of uh, take a break because you know you know it's like you're not always gonna roll the point. You know what I'm trying to say? Right, right. And so, uh, not to, to take a, you know, a lead off the Hot Streak title, you know, the, the last record was called Hot Streak, had a gambling uh, connotation, but anyway, you know, I thought in my mind, well, you know, this worked, it was fun, it was really cool, but I kind of want to go back to being Richie for a while and, right. and doing what I've been, what I was doing before. <laughs> and. Uh, and Billy has a franchise band with Mr. Big. I mean, you know, they they continue to make great music and, and tour. And, and Mike uh, 
although I'm sure he loves playing in the winery dogs, you know, his uh, ability on the instrument and, you know, his uh, style, you know, with the progressive rock thing, you know, that that's something he needs to do too because that's in his blood, you know, he's got to do that. And so it makes sense that we would, you know, go back and do what we were doing before. Right. But it also makes sense that eventually, you know, we'll reconvene and do something again too. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Now, you you play all over the world. You play. You open up for the Rolling Stones in Japan, man. I did for a whole tour. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What is that like going to other countries and, and playing the huge arenas? And, and well, the the Stones tour was pretty cool. We. That was all stadiums, and um, they never had an opening act in Japan before. I guess I was the only one, because in Japan, it's really traditional to not have an opening act. People go and they see the headliner. Uh, but I did five or six shows with them, and they were the easiest shows I ever did, believe it or not, because the sound was so good. Right. And they said, oh, you can go anywhere you want on the stage, just stay off the ramps. <laughs> That's all they said to me. <laughs> and so I, well, I didn't go on the ramps, obviously. Uh, but it was great. You know, it was a long time ago, uh, 12 years ago. Yeah, but still, yeah. man, it's got to be, you know, awesome. Yeah, it was. I, I, you know, it's funny. I didn't really tell many people I was doing it until after I did the first show, because somewhere in the back of my mind, I thought, this might not happen. Even though I'm on the airplane, I might get there and they might be like, you know what, we don't want to have, you know, they can do that. Right, you know? yeah, for sure. So I really kind of kept quiet until after I did the first show. And I was like, okay, I can, I did it. I opened for the Rolling Stones, you know. But yeah. <laughs> nothing really changed though, it, it's weird. You know, it's like, people, oh, you did that. I said, yeah, I know, but everything's still the same. <laughs> 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 Nothing's really different. But it was, you know, it's an honor, of course. It was cool to do. Now, I understand this tour of yours goes almost through a majority of the summer. Is that right? You yeah, we have this North America run here, and then we're going to go over to Europe for almost two months, which is a long time to be away from my wife and my dog and my daughter. Uh, and then I come back um, for a little bit, and then I'm going to do another run. In North America, actually, really? on the West Coast. Yeah, because I want to get get up to Seattle and Portland, and uh, you know, we don't we don't have any California shows. And you know, I live in L.A. You know, we don't have anything. So we're going to go do all that in September. You know. And you're going to be continuing to put out singles, I guess, throughout the time. That yeah, when I when it makes sense. You know, that song, uh, the last one I put out, uh, we got a lot of views on that pretty quick. So. I was kind of surprised, you know, I, like the the video I put out for the first single from my record last year, I think that the new single, The Dam, has already caught up to the other one that's been out a year, which is a good sign, I guess, I mean, I don't know what I did, I did something right in that video because people seem to like it, so I guess I should be happy about that. Yeah, for yeah. sure, <laughs> definitely. Now, people want to follow up, they want to know more about you, they want to know when the new single's coming out, they want yeah. to know if the Winery Dogs are going to put something out new. Where are they going to go? To Instagram? And that's going to look everything Well, if you want to like, keep up, I mean, I got a Twitter account, uh, Richie underscore Cotson, and then I have my Instagram, um, which is really, that's probably the best way to, 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 I mean, if you're on Facebook, I feed that stuff to Facebook too. But I put up, you know, whatever I'm doing, that is, you know, related to the music and the show. You know, if I have a new video, if I have a gig, like today I posted that we're playing here, you know, so people will know what we're doing, you know. And then uh, when I'm home, it's just a bunch of nonsense I put up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate your time. All right. Look cool. forward to the next single and uh, what you got coming out next. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.